Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast. I'm excited to welcome the host of the Love Is Podcast, Kim Zarell. Kim, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest today. I am Alana Cruz, rhymes with Dr. Seuss. I love that, uh, is our guest today. And I am so excited to talk to you because what you are doing to revitalize downtowns and your passion for that, I can't wait to get into it and hear about it. Why, why this? Why is this the cause of all causes that you think? That's a great, a great way to approach it. And thank you so much, both of you, for having me on the show today. Why this cause? Well, I worked for years in community development and thinking about how we make great places. Making great places has always been my passion. And we got to a point where we always talked about in theoretical theoretical terms, jobs, housing, balance, you know, and never said what it meant to live and work in a community. And when I launched Recast City eight and a half years ago, uh, I did it because I realized that there was a, a way to go about this that really invested in our communities, invested in the people who live there now, and made strong local economies, which is by bringing small scale manufacturing businesses into a community and into downtown. And, you know, and we launched as a part of that, this is exciting program, which is Recast Leaders, where we bring community leaders together to learn how to do this work. How important is it to have, you said, the right manufacturing businesses in a, in a, in a city? How, is important, how important is it? Yeah. So when we talk about small scale manufacturing, I'm talking about any kind of business that creates any tangible product that you can replicate or package. My shorthand for it is hot sauce, handbags, or hardware, right? It's, it's the artisans in our holiday market to our advanced manufacturing, 3D printing, a new hip replacement. So it's, it's everything in between. And the amazing part is they're there. It's not a recruitment question. It's a it's a discovery question. We have small scale manufacturing businesses in every community I've worked in, downtown Atlanta to center Colorado, population nineteen hundred people. There are people who make stuff. It's part of our history, our culture, our legacy. And so a lot of this is discovering those people, figuring out how to help them be stronger business owners and scale those businesses within the community. So that's part of the plan then, or, or the plan, is to reach out to these people. And uh, we've got all these empty storefronts. And so bringing them into downtown, is that the goal? It's one of the goals. So anytime we work with a community, we ask them what the community's goals are. I'm never going to tell somebody what their goal is. But a lot of communities, like you said, have vacant storefronts, empty storefronts in downtown. A lot of that predated the pandemic and the pandemic just made it worse. And one of the amazing things about small scale manufacturing, especially people who are making consumer products, right? Like those handbags or jewelry or candles or chocolate or, or brewery, right? Those are all consumer facing. Um, they're amazing to be able to walk into a door or look in a window and see something being made. It becomes an experience that draws people into downtown. And the other sort of magical thing about small scale manufacturing is they're selling in person, but they're also selling online. So one of my favorite businesses, CO Ceramics, they make ceramic jewelry. They sell in person in their micro storefront. They sell at the largest markets in the region. They sell online. They sell wholesale all out of 400 square foot storefront. And so that that means we're creating a really strong business, a really nimble business too. And you see how important local businesses are to the lifeblood of the economy, right? With that, employs more jobs, the opportunity to really bring that sense of community in any type of city, it sounds like, in your whole vision. Absolutely. And small-scale manufacturing businesses are generally paying 50 to 100% more than retail or service jobs. So when we're thinking about income inequities in our country, right, which is the biggest it's ever been in our recorded history, or um, we're thinking about how we're helping more people create uh, wealth building opportunities within, the, within their households, especially when we're looking across race and ethnicity and immigrant communities. This is a way there, right? Entrepreneurship and business ownership is an amazing opportunity for folks and small scale manufacturing doesn't require a college or advanced degree. It requires the knowledge of how to make a something and learning how to be a business owner for something that's resilient. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, you have me so excited because I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and um, I love downtown. I mean, I love going to downtown America, right? To From city to city and walking the streets. And it's not as fun when things are empty. A lot more fun when you can see things being manufactured. That's genius. 
And who doesn't want to buy it when you meet the people that are actually making it? I mean, it's got to be a win, win, win for everybody. What about large corporations? Do you get large corporations to, to buy in, help in any way? It's an interesting question. One of the things that we encourage community leaders to do is engage the bigger corporations as anchor partners. So if that large corporation can buy some of their stuff, whatever they need to buy from local businesses, that's putting their dollars directly into the local economy. Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore has a commitment, a local commitment to the community to buy a certain amount of services from within the community. Other anchor institutions, it could be a local government, it could be a major corporation, could buy anything they want from local businesses. And they often need some side of some sort of matchmaking for that all to happen because it's very relationship-based. But major corporations can certainly play a role in this as well. What is the ultimate goal with your organization? What do you want hope to, to bring to a, a community for sure? Wow, the ultimate goal. So the ultimate goal to me is a thriving downtown Mm -hmm. with amazing locally owned businesses that include small scale manufacturing that particularly are unique to that place in that community, because that's what means to create a resilient place that is inclusive of the people who live there. I don't want to displace people who live in a community. I want them to thrive as a community changes because we know change happens anyway. So let's change it for the better and make sure that everybody has a stake in that and everybody benefits from that. Yeah, and what a benefit because people don't want to live around empty buildings. Empty buildings can mean trouble, right? Bad things can happen in empty buildings. But when there's stuff going on, then probably a little coffee shop goes in or other things happen, little restaurants go in, and it becomes a place that people want to live. So uh, I, I would think that that would be a great side effect in uh, helping with residential and and. It seems like with younger people, especially, they like living in urban environments. And so you're doing an incredible job creating these wonderful urban environments for people to live. It's it's fantastic. So uh, what what's your dream? Like five years from now, what do you see? I'd love to see the storefronts filled with small scale manufacturing. I mean, it's sort of a, a simple statement, but it takes a lot to get there. When we work with communities, those storefronts are vacant for a whole a whole lot of reasons, right? We've built a ton of retail, more retail than per capita than any other country in the world for a whole bunch of different reasons. There's a lot of vacancy because people are are, are distant property owners, especially in our smaller rural towns. Um, and they leave Main Street historic buildings vacant and just falling apart. Uh, and then there's also the high cost of construction means that renovation, renovating space may not make economic sense without some kind of subsidy or support. So there's a lot of valid reasons we're in the spot we're in, but we also haven't done that much to really help lots of small businesses. It's it's starting, it's getting better over the last five, 10 years, we've gotten better at it. Um, but in a lot of cases, if you look at the investment going to lure a major corporation to a place versus the amount of investment going into towards local entrepreneurs and local small business owners, it just pales in comparison. And so I would love to see the real estate models, the technical assistance, the finance models, all focused on uh, supporting our small businesses, including small scale manufacturing, and really investing in creating those great places downtowns and in our neighborhood centers that have been neglected for a long time too. What's impressed me in listening to you is that you don't just look at the bigger metropolitan cities or even like the major cities in every state. You're looking at any place that has a city area that that downtown, the whole thing, think about, you know, back to the future and that downtown area and how it has <laughs> to be vitalized. I mean, you're, or there's small little towns in Texas for sure that they have rebuilt and regenerated the whole area with new restaurants that are all locally owned that, that community type feel, especially outside of Dallas, we have a lot of different little cities like that, that really are doing really well. They're allowing those places to really develop. That's the thing is that we have to look at these areas as becoming a, I guess that the, the landmark of what makes their community so great. I love that you use the term landmark because it is what makes that place unique. It's special people, it's unique stories. 
that make it different than every other place. One of the challenges or problems really we've created is in the world of big box retail, you go to the next highway interchange, they build a newer store in the next juris jurisdiction and yours empties out, right? And so there's no competitive edge when they're all the same. And when we're investing in our own local businesses in our own small scale manufacturing, the stories are different, the people are different, the way it comes together is going to be different. Um, and it really makes a place resilient and nimble, um, but also really special. And people wanna be included and have places to gather um, and be a part of those, those sort of beautiful experiences as part of it. Um, and that, that all comes together there. And it takes leadership, right? I mean, and I think this is what you're starting to get at, Neil, is the community leaders need to recognize that this is important. And that's why we call our program Recast Leaders, because we can ex I can explain to everybody how to do this work, but it takes somebody stepping up. It actually takes a group of people stepping up and, and, and being leaders to make these kinds of changes and investments happen in a community. How receptive are the leaders of communities to, to what you're doing? I would say very receptive, or at least that's who we end up working with. So it's a biased audience. Um, we work with communities from across the country, big places to small places, who get that they need to do something different. I mean, that's sort of the baseline. They know that what they did in the past in economic development didn't work. Their downtown has vacancies or a neighborhood that they want to work in has a lot of vacancies. They want to make sure that they're benefiting the people in that community today and helping them build more opportunity. And they're open to trying something different. That's sort of the baseline of, of being open to it. And what we do is we, sh we teach people how to go find small scale manufacturing, understand what you want to do with them, learn what their needs are and what assets you already have to build on and then take action, do something about it. None of this is about theory or long-term plans. My work is always on, well, what do we do in the next three months? Like what change are we making right now that makes a difference in your community today? And you're an author as well. And so you're, you, I was about to say, how can you scale this? You're, you're a, a group of certain people, but now you have a book that changes things, right? Because we write a book, so and Kim's going to explain her story of her book in a second too. You write a book for one reason, so that you can reach more people. And that's why you wrote the book, right? Because you can't make a difference for every city. You'd love to be able to do that, but you're only, hey, the scalability will be a long process. So the book at least gives a lot, it can reach a lot more people. Absolutely. It's, um, I knew I couldn't go one by one, right? Or even five by five. There are 30,000 different jurisdictions in our country, and I wanted people to know that they could do this on their own. They can do it with us if they want help, but they can do it on their own. And one of the most exciting things that's happened since the book has come out is that I'm starting to hear from people, oh, we re I read the book, we changed our zoning, we, we, we saw this business, we pulled them into downtown you know, and, and one of them was a bagpipe maker, right? Like people are finding all sorts of interesting producers to bring into their downtown that are really becoming these amazing sort of passionate centers of the community. And speaking of that, love Kim in a, in a, in a really quick way, kind of put the connection for a love question for her because of what she loves doing, right, Kim? Yeah. I mean, this is obviously a love for you and a, a passion for you. And it takes people like you to change things. And, and I appreciate you so much, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so I, uh, I lived a year, I dedicated a full year to figuring out the true meaning of love. And I have to tell you, when I go into a restaurant, I have a hard time committing to an entree. So committing a year to something was a big stretch for me. But the things that I found out about love, like blew my mind. And so I'm curious, where does love play a role in this for you? I believe that everybody should get to love where they live and that everybody should live, be able to live in a great place that however they define it doesn't have to, it's not based on my definition and that we have a responsibility to invest in those people and those places in a way that supports their love for their community. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great point. And millennials love experiences and millennials are the next generation after, you know, the Gen X and they really want experience so that's why our downtimes are being revitalized in every community and everywhere. And that's why your book is so perfect. Again, last, um, where can people buy the book real quick? Recast Your City, How to Save Your Downtown with Small Scale Manufacturing is available on Amazon and at bookshop.org. All right. That was the Love is Podcast and the Neil Haley Show. Guys, take care.